So we're about six games into the Premier League season and we're starting to find our feet. Keiichi Goto, our striker, is well and truly carrying the side. Let's go and review the fixtures. So following on from our opening day victory against Newcastle United, we then fell to a 2-1 away defeat against Everton. Sandro and Moise Kane put them 2-0 up inside 10 minutes. Keiichi Goto though got one back in the 59th, but we couldn't create another opportunity to get a draw. We then had a home tie against Arsenal where we suffered defeat once again. I mean, Guri, Hector Bellerin and Nicolas Pepe were the goals for Arsenal and Goto was the goals for us. A little bit of Premier League reprieve in there with a League Cup second round tie at home against Peterborough. We played pretty much a fully rotated side and managed to get a 3-1 win. Goto with a double and the French midfielder with one. And this was probably the most frustrating game of them all. A 3-3 home draw against Southampton. We were 1-0 up, then 1-1. 2-1 one, one. One up, then 2-2. Two, 3-1 two. up, then 3-3. Three, three. We just could uh, 3-2 up, sorry, then 3-3. Three, three. We just couldn't keep a lead. Um, every time we went in front, Southampton seemed to pounce us back pretty shortly afterwards. And um, despite a goal double and Ferran Torres goal, it's a draw. We then went away from home against Manchester City and got beat 2-0. Ryan Sessegnon and Bernardo Silva with the goals for them. They did go down to 10 men as well in the 45th minute, but even with an extra man, we just we couldn't compete. And then the best result of them all was a 4-1 away victory against Sheffield United. We did go 1-0 down in the 34th minute, but two goals from Goto, two goals from Thomas Nielsen meant we ran out 4-1 winners. And finally, in the League Cup third round, we did suffer defeat against Chelsea. Uh, Christian Eriksen getting the goal for them in the 69th minute, meaning we are now out of the League Cup. So we are sitting middle of the pack in the Premier League table, currently sitting in 10th place on 7 points after 6 games. As you can see, Goto is having an absolutely phenomenal season so far. 7 goals in 6 games is absolutely sensational. Today's opponents then, there will be West Ham, who are currently sitting in 6th position, and there will be Barnsley, our former club, Currently sitting in the bottom three. It's West Ham first though. Let's get to the game. We are going to make some pretty significant changes to our attack and lineup in particular. As Andre Anderson hasn't been performing. Trio has not been performing. And Ferran Torres hasn't really been performing either. So we're bringing in Thomas Nielsen, Jude Bellingham and Lan Alexander Diaz to hopefully spark a little bit of revival. Thomas Nielsen's done pretty well in the games that he's been able to play. He's only started one game, substitute three times, two goals and two assists in the Premier League. Which is absolutely fantastic. So this will be the lineup then. Harvard Hettel will start in goal. Keith Lonsdale, Meda, Marmol Savic in the defence. James Garner and Mauricio Chan in the centre of midfield. Thomas Nielsen, Benham Diaz, and Goto, of course, leading the line. He's no longer a two and a half star striker. Would you believe it? Well, and quickly, before I forget, someone did ask if uh, we were a favoured personnel for Sebastiano Esposito. He started two games for Inter Milan, so he's not a main man for Inter Milan. Maybe he might become available. Um, but if we compare him to Goto, he's not actually that good compared to him. As you can see, Goto's in the blue. He's got the air really and mentally on Goto, but defensive-wise, physically-wise, speed-wise, vision-wise, attacking-wise, Goto has the advantage in a lot of key areas. So um, Esposito probably wouldn't be the sort of player I would go for right now. But in terms of information, we are favoured personnel. So West Ham come on us with a very, very attacking line of 4-2-4. Decent players, obviously. They're currently sitting in sixth. They're having a good season so far. Um, but we, well, we've well, we got a good record against West Ham, at least, whilst we were managing Barnsley. So I fancy us today. First highlight of the game comes seven minutes in. It looks like it's going to be West Ham on the attack as they are currently in possession. But they'll go all the way back. Jose Campana finds Walker Peters on this right-hand side for West Ham. We'll close him down well, block the cross. And can we count it ourselves? Probably not. Jose Campana picks it up in the centre. Lonsdale... Oh, Harvard Hettel had to get rid and do well there and he has done so Goto picks up the ball finds Thomas Nielsen on the right hand side he cuts in he's in the box can he finish he certainly can Thomas Nielsen has shown why he should be our starting right midfielder his third goal of the season an assist for Keiichi Goto and we will take that all day eight minutes in and we find ourselves 1-0 up against West Ham. Some great play by Thomas Nielsen to get past his man. He drives into the box, one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. And it's a simple finish in the end. The keeper leaving his front post open, 1-0. Highlight straight from kickoff though. Are West Ham going to bounce straight back? The ball's played to the right-hand side for Walker Peters. Bombing down from right back. Julian Draxler back to Walker Peters. They're playing it about quite nicely. Savic with a great challenge though. Don't give, oh, don't give this ball away. That is a poor pass. No, it's not. Thomas Nielsen picks up. Are we going to catch them on the counter once again? He's got a lot of work to do though. Keith Lonsdale 
ends up being the supporting man and Thomas Nielsen plays it in the box for Goto. Is he offside? He is not offside. We go 2-0 up inside 10 minutes. Keiichi Goto's 10th goal of the season and Thomas Nielsen again proven he should be our starting right winger. Some good play by Keith Lonsdale in the support. Thomas Nielsen getting past his man at the left back spot and Goto. He's got the movement. He's got the composure. He's got the finishing. What more do you need? If I remember correctly, we smashed West Ham 7-1 when we were in charge of Barnsley. I wouldn't mind that again. I don't think it's going to happen this time, though. As Jose Campana plays on the ball, we managed to get it clear. Goto picks it up again, and is it going to be another counter-attack and opportunity for ourselves? He brings it down this left-hand side. He doesn't have a lot of support to arrive, and now plays it back to Zlatan Sehevich. Is he going to go for goal? He is. <laughs> I mean, what is it with us against West Ham? Chavez, the goalkeeper, should probably be keeping that one out, but Zlatan Sehevich... Not even our starting left back really gets himself his first goal of the season. We are now 3 0 up. All three counter attacks as well. Absolutely fantastic. This is a brilliant strike. 18 yards out. Keeper, yeah, probably a little bit suspect, but we do not care. And looking at the match stats, it's actually in West Ham's favour. So the fact that we're 3 0 up is a little bit crazy as Williams brings up the ball down the left hand side for West Ham driving into the box. He's going to go for goal himself and Hettle. Keep, I'm surprised he kept a hold of that. That was pretty good. Corner again for West Ham. Campana to play it in. It's cleared by Maida. And Jude Bellingham is going to be the first man to the ball. Is it going to be another devastating counter-attack opportunity for us? He's bringing it forward all the way by himself. Goes for goal. It's a comfortable save in the end. This first half is chock a block full of highlights. Sehevich picks up the ball in the centre of the park. Mika Marmol tries to play it over the top for Kiichi Goto. But it's cut out. Long ball over the top for West Ham, though. Brown's in behind. Harvard Hettel. Oh, mate. Come on. You need to be getting a stronger hand to that one. And Archie Brown gets his second goal of the season for West Ham and brings things at Birmingham 3. West Ham 1, as you can see, it was just a long ball over the top. Brown with the strike. Hettel gets his hand to it, but it's not enough. And um, we need to be a little bit more cautious now, I think. And that brings us to half time. It's pretty even in terms of the match stats. West Ham having. Uh, the majority of the possession though and 3-1 it's not it's not a very comfortable scoreline I'll, I have to admit I'm not feeling incredibly comfortable with it we are going to go back to a positive team mentality drop the tempo slightly so we might be able to keep the ball for a bit longer periods of time and keep West Ham out of this game a little bit more we'll see how that goes for the second half it's took to the 67th minute to get our first highlight of the second half which is absolutely fine by me Mauricio Cham plays a buck to Mika Marmol. Maida. He's got space on the right hand side for Keith Lonsdale if they want to try and find them. There's Marmol with the ball over the top from the right hand side. Thomas Nielsen brings it down. Goes for goal himself and Chavez with another save. With 20 minutes to go we are going to make some changes. That left hand side still not really producing the goods. We're going to bring on Pablo Martinez Trio. Our, our main uh, left winger there. Mauricio Chan's not having the greatest game either in the centre midfield. We're going to bring Bellingham back into that centre midfield role and bring Andrea Anderson on in the attack and midfield role. Time is just ticking away. We've definitely killed off this game in the second half. We get our second highlight of the second half with only six minutes remaining. Our West Ham going to pounce and try to get back into this game. Andre Anderson picks up the ball, fades it to Trio on this left-hand side. He knocks it back to Sevich. Is he going to whip the ball in? He is. Who is there? Diop is there to get it clear for West Ham. And are they going to counter now? No, they're not. They give the ball away to Keith Lonsdale who finds... Uh, Nielsen plays in the Martinez trio is cutting inside Jude Bellingham's there I thought we were going to give the ball away there Andre Anderson there's a lot of bodies in the centre of the park so we'll play it out wide to Sevich Martin Trio's oh my god this oh it's offside no that was such a good goal really really well worked by our lads but uh, unfortunately for us Pablo Martinez trio was just offside Peak plays in the ball for West Ham we managed to get a clear through Mika Marmol only four minutes remaining and um West Ham are definitely coming at us now. Declan Rice with a long ball over the top. It's fine. Luis Diaz is one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. And West Ham bring it level to... Well, not level. Not yet. Birmingham 3, West Ham 2. Now I'm nervous. Time has ticked away, though. We are going to get away with this. Birmingham 3, West Ham 2. We get our third win in the Premier League now. Um, at home against a good side who was sitting in sixth place at the time of playing. So we will take that all day well done to Thomas Nielsen, well done to Goto, well done to Sehevic. So we've got Barnsley in a few days' time. They are still sitting in the bottom three. We are away from home though, so we will have to be careful. And they have a very, very good squad. So I'm highly surprised that they are sitting. They're sitting in 19th position now. 
which is a little bit crazy. What did they do in the last fixture? They ended up drawing away from home against Sheffield United. Ian van der Heerde getting the goal for Barnsley. We'll fast forward to that game. We'll see how we get on. Right, so we're here for the game against Barnsley. We have been forced to make a couple of changes to the starting eleven. Trio comes in for Alexander Diaz as he didn't really have a great game last time, so we'll give Trio another chance. Andre Anderson has had to return at the attack midfield spot as Jude Bellingham is now required in the central midfield spot as Mauricio Chan has decided to bugger off and go and perform for the Mexico under 23s. And unfortunately for us, James Garner is suspended, so um, our French midfielder is having to play in defensive midfield. Not ideal um, way to go into this game, but needs must. Let's go into it. So let's take a look at this Barnsley squad. Clayton, the signed when I wasn't there. Callum Chambers, the signed this season. Joaquin Anderson, the signed last season. Alan Franco, our old boy. Joaquin Sanchez, our old boy, alongside Foster Vera, Nicholas Capaldo, Ian van der Heerde and Lewis Montaneu. Uh, Christian Barrios and Dusan Tadic starting for them. So a pretty transformed Barnsley side since we left about, what was it, a year and a half ago. We'll wait and see how that goes. Um, they're not doing very well in the league, but... They've still probably got a better start in 11 than we do. I, I still fancy our chances though. First 10 minutes has been all Barnsley going by the match stats. We have turned ourselves down to a more balanced approach and see if that could get us back into this game a little bit. Well, the first half's been exhilarating so far, completely opposite from the West Ham game. We're 35 minutes in and we still haven't had a highlight. Well, that was brilliant. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I would appear to say that. Nil, nil, half time. <laughs> Let's kick off for the second half. First highlight of the game comes 49 minutes in. It's Barnsley on the attack with a corner. It's cleared out though to Iron van der Heerde. <laughs> that was dodgy. I did not think that was going to go well. Mierda plays out the ball to Keith Lonsdale on this right hand side. He's bombing forward. He's got options in the middle if he's played in. But he goes all the way back. Jude Bellingham to Andre Anderson. Goto back to Bellingham. Bellingham goes for goal. Oh, That would have been such a fantastic goal. 66 minutes in now. Barnsley again on the attack with a throw-in in our final third. Plays it all the way back to Joaquim Anderson. We've got options there on that left-hand side if they need them to find Joaquin Sanchez. Can we? No, we can't. We can't get the challenge in. Oh, he goes. Thankfully, wing-back score for goal quite a lot and hit the side netting quite a lot. Barnsley again this time with a free kick. Christian Barrios is going to be the man to take it. Can we get rid? No, we can't. And our former man, Lewis Montaneu, gets his goal and puts Barnsley 1-0 up with only 20 minutes remaining. We're going to have to go attacking from this point and hope that we can get a goal back and get ourselves back into this game. But pretty poor defending by us. There was four men all around it, none of which went for the ball. And uh, highlight, highlight, it's a corner. Goto, Goto, that was awful. <laughs> Sanchez brings it down the left-hand side for Barnsley. It looks like it's going to be them on the attack during this highlight. Plays it back to Dusan Tadic. Bar's played in. Is that going to go out? It's not Iron van der Heerde. Keeps it in play. Sevic pinches it though. And Martinez Trio can bring it away. Is this going to be a counter-attack of dreams? 19 minutes to go. The ball's played over the top. Kichi Goro's in behind and he goes for goal. And Goro, I tell you what, this man is a clinical machine. 11 goals this season so far. Absolutely fantastic ball over the top by Pablo Martinez Trio. And we get ourselves back into this game. Barnsley won. Birmingham won. Fantastic finish. We will take that all day. Corner for Barnsley. Barrios to play it in. Oh, it's not really very well cleared as Dusan Tadic picks it up about 25 yards out. It's back out to Barrios though. Can he whip it in? He can. Oh, we'll manage to get the block in and get it clear. With 10 minutes to go, we will look to make some changes. Ferran Torres can come on for Thomas Nielsen. John Espinosa for Keith Lonsdale. And we don't really have a lot of options. Philippe Sandler can come in in the defensive midfield role to hopefully solidify that a little bit more. He is typically more of a centre-back by trade. Servic with a corner, plays in the back post. Goto's there, Torres is there. We hit the bar. I uh, didn't think that was going in. Two minutes to go. Can we pinch this at the end? Martinez Trio does well to keep the ball. Servic to Sandler. Oh, he gets dispossessed. Why did I bring him on? <laughs> Barrios bombing down. Can we get the block in? It's a save. It's an easy save in the end by Hettel. And there's time ticking away. Barnsley won. Birmingham won. Away from home against the side who's been in the Premier League for two seasons. We will take that all day long. And that's how the Premier League table stands after those two games. We currently sit in ninth position. 11 points after eight games is not too shabby if I do say so myself. In terms of top goal scorers, is Goto there? He is. He is now two goals ahead of Bernardo Silva. 
He is a man machine. Eight games, nine goals in the Premier League. He's now a four-star striker. Would you believe it? He's grew one and a half star in about six weeks. Looking forward to the next episode, then we will have one more set of games before the January transfer period. I'm looking at this Norwich and Aston Villa combo to hopefully, I'm, I'm, if you haven't noticed, I'm aiming for games where, you know, we've got a better chance of winning. So I think it's going to be them too. Or maybe Brighton Norwich. You never know. But anyway, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.